Good afternoon, my dear students. Today I am going coming up with a new topic that is called second order derivatives. In the last class, we have discussed about the derivative of a function in parametric form. And uh, after completion of this, let us start with second order derivative. So, what is actually second order derivative? In the last few classes we have discussed like suppose y is a function of x y is a function of x then if you derivative y with respect to x you are getting dy by dx or you are getting y f dash x which is denoted by a symbol y1 or y dash this type of derivative of a function with respect to x are called what? First order. It is called first, first order derivative. Okay. Now, if dy by dx is again differentiable or y1 or y dash or y dash x are again differentiable, then you take the dx of dy by dx on both sides then it will be d dx of f dash x. The d dx of dy by dx is denoted by the symbol d2y upon dx2 and it is called f double dash x. Okay? That's d2y upon dx2 is denoted by the symbol y2 or y double dash x and it is what f double dash x. So if the function is expressed in terms of y, we are getting second order derivative and this particular derivative is called what? Second order derivative. Hmm? This order is 2. Okay, it is also denoted by y2, it represents what? Second order and it also what represents what? Second order. That means if y is a function of x, then y1 or y dash or f dash x are called first order derivative and y2 or y double dash or f double dash x and which also representing as d2y upon dx2 these are called second order derivative of a function y equal to what fx this actually these are representas, representation of what? Second order derivative. After getting first order derivative, if we again derive it with respect to x, you are getting what? Second order derivative. So, here I am going to solve few questions related to this topic. First question is, the question is if, simple question I am starting. If y equal to sin inverse x, then prove that, or you can say that show that 1 minus x square into y2 minus xy1 equal to 0. This is second order derivative, this is first order derivative. Okay, start with the given relation. The given relation is y equal to sin inverse x. This is given. First you find dy by dx. That means first you find y1. Therefore, y1 equal to d dx of sin inverse. y1 means dy by dx which equal to dx of sin inverse x is equal to what? 1 by root over 1 minus x square. Whenever you get such type of relations is under square root or something this first your aim is to what? Cross multiplying both sides you will get 1 minus x root over 1 minus x square is equal to what? 1. Okay? And then next step is you have to remove the square root. 
and how to remove the square root, you have to square in both sides, you will get this is your result. Now, after getting this result, your aim is to get y2, so you have to derive it in this particular relation, both sides with respect to what? x. Okay. Now, differentiating both sides with respect to x. Here, there are two functions. One is this is you consider this is u and this is what b. So, you can apply the dx of what u into b. The dx of u into b is equal to what u into the dx of b plus b into the dx of u. So, you can start y1 square u into ddx of b, b means what, 1 minus x square plus 1 minus x square into ddx of y1 square and ddx of 1 is constant which is 0. So, how what formula I am applying here, u into ddx of b plus b into ddx of u. Now, which implies, here if you derive it, this ddx of 1 is 0, so here 0 jayagi, minus is there and ddx of x square is equal to what? twice x. Okay, I hope you are understanding. 1 minus x square, now ddx of y1 square. Here, what will happen, you know, ddx of y square is equal to what? twice y into dy by dx. So, if it is y1 square, then it will be 2y1 into ddx of y1. And ddx of y1 means what? ddx of y1 means what? y2. Second order derivative. So, it becomes what? 2y1 y2. So, finally, ddx of y1 square is what? After applying this, you are getting what? 2y1 into y2 is equal to 0. Okay? Uh, I hope you are understanding the steps what I am going to discuss. Okay? Now, there are two things you see. This 2 is multiplied here. Here 2 is multiplied. It will be cancelled. Finally, what your result becomes x y1 square plus 1 minus x square into y1, y2 is equal to what? 0. Again, you see y1 is y1 is common. If you take common and y1 is cancelled, y1 is nothing but what? y1 is nothing but dy by dx. And dy by dx is a what? It is a slope of a tangent. And slope of a tangent is tan theta. And ultimately, dy by dx is a real number. So, here you can, it is a real number. You can real number cancel cancel. If it, if it is non-zero, then a, mark, dividing both sides by y1, and it, is, it will be x y1, and it will be 1 minus x square into what y2 equal to what 0. Finally, you make a calculation, here you get 1 minus x square into y2 minus x y1 is equal to what 0. This is your my final result. Okay. I hope you understand. You start with this relation. First you derivative this relation. If you derivative y you will get y1 and derivative of sin inverse x is equal to 1 by 2 by 1 minus x square. Then squaring the uh, that is uh, cross multiplying the relation then squaring both sides. Then again differentiating both sides with respect to x and finally you get all the results and in this way you, you, you get the results. Okay. Need practice. In this type of problem, you need practice. If you do not practice, then ultimately you, you, you will not able to solve such type of problem. So always practice one, two, three times. Then what happen to solve such type of problem? You, you grow the ability to solve such type of problem. Okay. So I am coming with next problem, and uh, let us start with the next problem. The next problem is interesting problem. The problem is if 
equation is if y equal to n inverse x whole square show that show that x square plus 1 whole square into y2 plus 2x into x square plus 1 into y1 equal to 2. You are going to prove this. Okay. Let us start with the relation, given relation. A given relation is y equal to n inverse x whole square. Now, first you derive it in the given relation with respect to what x. Okay. Differentiating parenthesis or left hand side kya y1. Therefore, y1 is equal to right hand side is ddx of 10 inverse x whole square. Okay implies y1 is equal to now here you are going to use what chain rule so you suppose that 10 inverse or you imagine that 10 inverse x is what your x so it will be of the type x square and the dx of x square is equal to what twice x so 2 i either 2 into x x means what 10 inverse x okay and since 10 inverse x we imagine is x, it is not x, it is other than x, so again derivative of 10 inverse x. Okay, then you get y1 is equal to 2 into 10 inverse x, and we know that the dx of 10 inverse x is equal to what? 1 by 1 plus x square. Okay, we know this. So, since a term like denominator, whenever any, any term is in the denominator, you always cross multiply in such type of problem, then it will be easy for you to solve or to prove the problems, to get your final result. So, what we will do, we will cross multiply y1 into 1 plus x square equal to what to 10 inverse x okay since there is no square term it's square root is there so no need to square square term makers are again you derivative is relation again differentiating with respect to x again differentiate with respect to x in the left hand side is a product rule so you can use the dx of u into b. So, what will happen? y1 into the dx of what? 1 plus x square plus 1 plus x square into the dx of this y1. The dx of y1. The dx of y1 actually what? It is y2. If you write y2, then it will be better. I am just explaining, but in the exam, you write the dx of y1 direct y2, okay? And the right hand side, the dx of 10 inverse x is equal to what? 1 by 1 plus x square. So, it can be y1 into the dx of 1 is what? 0 and the dx of x square is what? Twice x plus 1 plus x square the dx of y1 is what y2 and which is equal to right hand side by 2 by 1 plus x square. Again cross multiplying you will get here term with the length multiply what jayagi twice x into 1 plus x square into y1 and if you multiply this with then 1 plus x square whole square into y2 equal to 2. Finally, 1 plus x square into y2 plus 1 plus x square into twice x into y1 equal to 2. This is your final answer. So, I hope you understand. So, in this way, you have to solve that problem. 
So this is very easy chapter. Many a time question marks in the final examination, and uh, you you try and you practice. Definitely you can able to solve such type of problem very easily without any hesitation. Whenever you are going to solve a chapter or complete a chapter, let us start to practice it. Without practice, you cannot do well in maths. Your conception is clear, everything is clear, but you have not practiced it, means you cannot able to solve the problem. You can miss the step and there will be a difficulty you face. Okay, let us start with another problem. Question, if e to the power y into x plus 1 is equal to 1, this is the given condition and you are to show that you are to show that y2 equal to y1 square okay with given relation is of given e to the power y into x plus 1 is equal to 1 this is your suppose relation number 1 okay differentiating both sides both sides with respect to x differentiating both sides with respect to x so e to the power y into t d x of x plus 1 plus x plus 1 into d d x of e to the power y and right hand side is 1 derivative is 0 derivative of a constant is 0 so you are getting e to the power y and d dx of x is what 1 and d dx of 1 is 0 so ultimately 1 plus 0 into 1 1 plus 0 is equal to what and ultimately if you multiply with e to the power y it is 1 e to the power y into 1 is equal to e to the power y finally x plus 1 and d dx of e to the power y okay here d dx of e to the power y you can see that suppose imagine that this x then the dx of e to the power x is what? e to the power x means here y but y is other than x so again derivative of y with respect to x and the dx of y means what? y1 so it is y1 is equal to what? 0 ok now it is e to the power y plus here <coughs> e to the power y into x plus 1 is what 1 so you can write this relation this is equal to what 1 so you can get y1 is equal to what 0 ok now differentiating this relation with respect to x you will get again differentiating with respect to x so left hand side is e to the power y into again derivative of y d d x of e to the power y kya hoga e to the power y hoga fir y ka derivative kya hoga y1 hoga this one okay ye kya hota hai e to the power y into y1 so uska derivative same hi hai e to the power y into 1 hoga and derivative of y y1 is equal to what y y2 derivative of y1 is what y2 d d x of y1 is equal to what? Y2. Okay. Then finally, from this relation you see, very important relation, you can replace e to the power y by minus y1. Okay. Okay. You replace it because in your result, final result may e to the power y nahi chahiye to usko eliminate karna hai kaise karenge e to the power y is replaced by minus y1 this relation mein to if replace karenge to here kya hoga y1 into y1 minus y1 into y1 is equal to what minus y1 square plus y2 your x since e to the power y equal to minus e to the power y equal to minus I'm sorry you write since e to the power y equal to minus y1 okay 
So finally, you are getting y2 equal to y minus square. Hence your result. Okay, this is this is uh, this is the demand of the problem, need of the problem. You are to going to prove that this. So we have reached it. In this way, you use your technique, and uh, more practice is required, and uh, perfection will come when you practice the problem. Okay. Only just understanding is not important. Understanding is the most priority. At the same time, parallel way, you have to practice. And when you practice the problem, your confidence will be down. Okay? Let us start with another problem, important one. The question is, question is, if, if y equal to a into cos log x a into cos log x plus b into sin log x a and b are arbitrary concept maybe anything like a is equal to 2 b equal to 3 or anything arbitrary means a take many constant values and b takes many values all are constant values then you have to prove that prove that x square into y2 plus x into y1 plus y equal to 0. This is your need of the problem. You have to prove that this. So, you have to start with your given relation. The given is what? y equal to a into cos log x and plus b into sin log x. So this is your given right numbering it number one relation, okay? Now differentiating with respect to x. y1, y1 means what? ddx of y. Then I am taking ddx here, so right inside me then get a into ddx of cos log x plus b into ddx of sin log x a and b are constant so they will come out from the differentiation okay so here you see your main function is cos and under cos inside cos this is another function log x so if you imagine log x is x then it will be converted into formula ddx of cos x ddx of cos x is what uh, minus sin x okay so what will happen a minus either ajayi minus cos kya hoga? sin inside what log x and since log x is other than x so again derivative of log x with respect to x it is what 1 by x no need to write ddx of log x again similar in same pattern it will be b cos log x and ddx of log x is what again 1 by x ddx of sin means cos inside log x is there again derivative of log x is what 1 by x it is by chain rule. I already told you whenever anything in the denominator, square or LCM liya jaya, to denominator mein kya aega? x aegi, total figure mein x aegi. And then what happened? Puri figure mein x niche aegi. To x ko multiply karo idhar, kya hoga? x into y1 equal to, right hand side becomes a into sin log x plus b into cos log x. Okay, this is the uh, re uh, result after what happened multiplying both sides by x. x ko either multiply ko to either x, x1 by x cancel over, x1 by x cancel over. Now I am differentiating again, differentiating both sides with respect to x. Differentiating both sides with respect to x. You will get So, left hand side is what x into y1. Left hand side kya hoga therefore ddx of x into y1. u into b. If you expand it, x into ddx of y1 plus y1 into ddx of x kya hoga? 1 hoga. 
finally x into the dx of y1 is what y2 is equal to y1. So if you differentiating both sides with respect is what we will get? We will get x y2 plus y1 is equal to now right hand side again divide it. What happens? Same way the dx of sin log x. Here the dx of sin log x we got the dx of sin log x kya hua tha? cos log x into 1 by x minus to hai minus a into cos log x into 1 by x and if you derive it in this that means you have to derive it in what this figure the derivative of cos log x is what sin log x okay sin minus sin log x so either if you have a plus hai, to is me minus a jayegi b is constant it will become the dx of cos means what sin log x and again derivative of log x is what 1 by x already we have done this derivative of cos log x derivative of sin log x we get it so i am not going to explain again now 1 by x 1 by x is there so again multiplying both side by x if you multiply it you will get x square into y2 plus x y1 is equal to multiplying this you will get minus a cos log x okay because 1 by x is what x and multiplying into 1 by x and x kya hoga? cancel ho jai. so it becomes what b sin log x log x b sin log x okay now you see here minus can be taken common minus can be taken common after taking minus what will happen a into cos log x plus b into sin log x our aim is to what that is we have to eliminate the constant and b we have to eliminate the log cos this term figure because in your result there is no term such type of term is there and this is this term is nothing but your what given relation it is what it is your given relation what is the given relation yes y it, it can be written as y this is equal to minus y finally you can write x square y2 plus x y1 and if y is coming the right hand side left hand side it becomes plus y and right hand side becomes what zero and I think which is the final result you want to prove it. So this is a very interesting problem and I repeatedly tell you practice, practice and practice and then you can improve in maths. Without practice you cannot be make yourself expert in the problem. What happened, what is the actually that is the importance of practice. First what happened, you understand the start step you understand how the formula can be applied or your speed will be picked up. So there are many benefits are there. So practice is very important. So once you understand the problem, let us practice two, three times and regular practice is very important. So if you do like that, definitely I hope you will be a good student in maths. And my aim is to that my students should be good in maths. Thank you very much for attending my class and listening my lecture. Thank you very much.